Hey, how's it going? This is James with VFX Nomad, and we've got to the last part of our Canyon Run tutorial. So hopefully you guys have either run out your own footage or are just going to pick up mine. Either one is fine. Uh, I just wanted to say I watched back over the last tutorial I did, and it was pretty hard going, so uh, well done for getting this far. I forgot to mention with the environment light, I left a stream map file there next to the normal map file. The only reason for that was for you to be able to plug it in and see what the difference was. Uh, what you'll find is there's this white kind of speckling that throws itself all over the geo. Um, it's just a bit of a bug and it's been logged and everything, but just in case you're working, because it kind of threw me when I came across it. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, putting this in a bit of a slap comp so that we can render it out. I mean, of course, you can uh, obviously make a bit more effort and put something together that's a bit nicer. But I just wanted to take you th through what I did. This you've already seen, which is what we started with. When we press play and we kind of go through and everything flies around. So I just want to take you through um, using the AOVs that we have and making it all work. So we're going to make the vector blur work, we're going to shuffle out the ID for the jet, we're going to change its color, put a couple light wraps on stuff and then render it out if you, oh, and of course put this guy in there. First things first, we want to bring in a sky. In the lesson file, which is in this lesson bundle, there's two HDRI files in here. They're both from the same website, which I showed you earlier. Um, and I've even put a little file in there somewhere. There you go, HDR original website. So with that in mind, you can pick the one that you like. I think I ended up going for this one. If we take a quick look at it. All right. Um, I'm doing this in Nuke. You can, of course, do this in whatever program that you want. It's just, this is what I use. This is what we're going to go through. This is the non-commercial version. So you should be able to just open it at home. Um, and download from the website for free and everything should be all good. The first thing that we want to do with this image is going to be we want to put it on a sphere. So there we are, we're on a sphere and then we're going to want to render this out. So in order to render it out, we're going to need a scanline renderer. And the scanline renderer is going to take this image, which we put on the sphere, and it wants to look through a camera at it and then we'll render out the result. That's essentially what, what we're doing. So to do that, we're going to need to read in that motion paths file that we made before. If you remember, the motion path had in the ships as well as the basic geo, but it also had the camera in there. So looking at our, looking at our bundle, we have motion path. There we go. Open that. And it's going to ask us we want to make them separate, which we do. Okay, that is the geo, so it can go in the bin. This red thing here is your camera. Looking through the camera, now look at your scanline renderer. If you've got a view like this, just press tab and it will show you through the viewer. Now the first thing that you're going to notice is that this is very, very small. And additionally, you probably want to set this up right now have a look at what resolution your footage is. If your footage came from me, it's going to be 1280 by 720. You rendered it locally. I don't know what resolution you rendered it at, but presuming it's the same. We now need to tell Nuke that that's the size that, we, that we're working in. So press S here, change this to 1280 by 720, and everything in this chain will now work correctly because this is going to output at that resolution. Clicking on this, we can see that our, well, we don't see a lot. We have a sphere over here with the with the sky mapped on it, but it's way too small. So double click on the sphere. We'll make this 100 by 100 by 100, and we'll scale everything up by 10. And we get something like that, which is fine. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to pull in our footage. So wherever you've rendered it to, bring it in, but bring in the layout, and then bring in your ships. If you bring it in mind, they should just be in that render folder in the lessons. Now take a look at it. There we go. As we discussed earlier, it could definitely use some samples to help clean it up, but we're going to blur the bejesus out of it. So 
that'll help cover us a little bit, but it's not going to get us all the way. We've already seen what it looks like. The first thing that I, well, let's get the vectors working first and foremost, because the vector blur is very useful, but it can be a little bit fiddly at first. The main thing that you need to do is tell it what the channel is that we um, that we output that had that had the information on it for the vectors. When you double click on this and you look at it, if you go here, you're going to see that all of our AOVs are contained within this EXR. So it's actually quite a big file. Our motion vectors, which we output, hold the data that we need for this vector blur to work. Double click on the vector blur and it says UV channels. What are they? we say motion vector because that's what we gave it and immediately nothing happens the reason for that is your motion blur amount is very small i.e. zero so let's bump that up to 10 quite big and again nothing happens but that's because it's looking for presets the one that i think works is this one v-ray velocity clamped and if you give it a moment yeah Mo mo vector blur is is a little bit tough for it to render so have have some mercy on it and there we go we're blurring if if that's not enough for you then feel free to crank it up to whatever number makes you happy but we're not trying to match anything so you can kind of get away with whatever you think is pleasing or gives you what it is that you're looking for the delay here is probably going to annoy you um and that's just kind of the way it is. So once you've set it up, you could pause it and leave it um, until you're ready to render. That'd be a good way to avoid having to do this all the time because this is only one. This is only one render at this point. So we've got a whole nother one to put on top as well as all of this. So it's going to get pretty tough if you're running on a small machine like I am. Okay, so we can see that's working. So for the moment, I'm going to disable it. <clears throat> and what I'm interested in doing is adding this immediately to this. So what I want to do is I want to merge it and I want to make sure the B spline is that one. So B for background going that way and I want to plug it into my footage and then I want to look at it. And that is roughly what I'm getting. So let's rewind to the beginning. We can see that our, that our sun's kind of come in this way. We want to rotate it so that it matches up. Double click on the sphere and then play with the rotate until it's roughly in a position you're happy with. For me, yeah, that'll do. We look through it here. We know our sun's over here somewhere. And the best thing to happen if your sun's over in this direction would be a light wrap. Um, what I might do, in fact, is even bump up the exposure a little bit. So I'm just going to press G and it's going to give me a grade. I'm going to bump that up to two. There we go, our sky's more blown out. And then I'm going to make a light wrap. Here we go. And drop it on our footage. Now the light wrap needs to, needs to have the footage, well, it needs to have the light that you want to wrap around the footage. In essence, it's kind of like a blur around these edges. What does that mean? So if we look here and we increase the intensity to something huge, you can see that our edges glow. Now when we merge that over the top, this light, this background is blurring or wrapping around our edges. So to make it look not crazy, probably want something relatively strong and small. I mean, what, what did I put here? One and four, five and nine, 25 and four. They seem random, but okay. I'm sorry, I did this last night when I was tired. As you probably heard in the tutorial, I was, I've was i not been very well. So sorry if it's a bit down tempo, but there we go. Uh, let, let's just say that's fine for now. We can always come back and change this if we don't like it. Plug in another light wrap, make it a bit more diffused, and then take down the intensity. down the intensity and then maybe even one more light wrap because we can so take this try and keep it a bit cleaner than what I'm doing and 
if we go plug that puppy in there and then we look at three of them and this last one we want it to be really diffuse but very weak okay that edge looks a bit funky my guess is it's coming from this guy yep he's just way too big so what does that all look like there we go yeah it's kind of blowing out as you would expect and wrapping and it's kind of okay so i would i would say tinker with that until you're happy and then we add our vector blur on top of the wrap which i'm not sure if it's the right way around or not i i've been playing with both of them like blurring and then light wrapping or light wrapping and then blurring i'm sure blurring first is correct um because that's how it would work when you have your 3d motion blur but for some reason it doesn't doesn't seem to distort as well um i'm not sure why but um anyway i guess the whole point of visual effects is just doing whatever you think would look good so there we go that's kind of what we get the vector blur is probably a bit too aggressive but we can tinker as we like uh, having having said what i just said this is this is a render that I did earlier with the two different setups. So one with the this is with the vector blur after the light wrap, and this is with the vector blur before the light wrap. It gives us more vector blur if we have it after everything for whatever reason. So without going too far off course, let's go back to where we just were. It's going to take a second to cook because I cancelled it. So I might pause this video for a second. While it was calculating, I thought I'd leave you guys from watching a spinning screen. But this this is, in essence, what we get when we plug in what we currently have. As I said before, this might be a bit too much, um, but, but that's totally up to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the vector blur for a moment because as we've experienced, it takes a very long time to process. But we know that we want, in essence, the same stuff on the other render as well. Other render being the ships. So underneath our merge node, we want to merge again. And again, we want to make sure that the B spline goes up this way. And our A spline adds on from here. Again, we need to give it the previous image. Uh, this is control, or if you're on a if you're on a Mac, then you press the Apple key. Hold it down and these buttons will appear and you can just click on one. And then just attach all of these B inputs and the A input, plug it into your footage. Okay, everybody's on top. It should be light wrapping to whatever we told it to do. And we're almost ready to fire this guy off and go get a coffee. But we said we were gonna change this other jet's color to go through that quickly. We want to shuffle out the AOV. We called it, I think we just called it ID, or sorry, this was my other render where I actually called it ship. So there we go. The one on the right is red, so we shuffle everything into red. There we go. And then what we need to do is deselect everything, come over here and make a hue, well, I'm using a hue shift. Click hue shift and we drop it in. Let's look at that. The hue shift has a mask, and the mask is what we're going to plug into the shuffle. Let's make it a bit neater. What that means is now anything that I do on the hue shift should just happen to this jet here. I'm going to shift it. There you go. He's already a pinky color. I mean, you can, you can do whatever you want, but because it's shifting all of the colors, uh, this might not be the best way to do it. Maybe a color correct would have been better and shift red to something else. But you know, you guys can play. You don't need me to, to go through every step with you. But here is, here we go. It's pink. Pink will do. So we, oh. we look at everything now. So we have one pink and one sort of orangey red jet. Everything's going over the top of each other. And then we give it a write file. If you wanted to add depth to this just before we render it out, you can also, of course, do that. The easiest way is gonna to be to shuffle out the depth channel, which we need to plug in or we get nothing. 
Thank you. All right. There's our depth channel. Let's look at it. There we go. We are getting numbers. If you look down here at the bottom, that's great. So that we just need to sample those. Uh, this is the easiest way, I think, to do it. So we're going to look at the shuffle. Double click on the grade. Control click or Apple click on the dropper to make it active. And we will say this here is going to be my black point. I'm going to click on this bit back here and I'm going to say that is going to be my white point. Now look at the grade and you're going to get this mask, which will help you out. You can use that mask. Some people like to do it this way. They get a grade and then they plug into the grade like this and you can have a gain or a lift. Um, I guess that works. I mean, you can have this gain. It's just going to add whatever on here it's all a bit strong at the moment sure probably because our mask is a bit crazy um intense that is the other way to do it which i'm kind of coming around to actually is to use a constant and if you use a constant you can you can just select the color of your background to make this obvious and to just let everybody go home I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna make it green. Okay, so it'll be nice and obnoxious. And then we're gonna make a merge. And what we're gonna do is merge this constant onto our footage, which looks gross. And then we're going to use the gain as a mask. The reason this is kind of okay is because you, Get a bit more control like this. What it allows you to do is also change. If, like if you're looking right at a sunrise or something or in the right hand corner, you've got a darker patch of sky. That's quite hard to control if you just grade something up or down because that's a uniform color. Whereas if you have this constant, you could actually roto in shapes where it's going to change tone or I mean, in, just in general, you're going to have a bit more control. So to render this out, I'm going to turn it off. We don't need it right this minute. We're ready to turn the vector blurs back on and we'll render it out. Uh, I already rendered this guy out as we saw. This is the vector blur at the end, like we have it now. And this is the vector blur at the beginning. Um, yeah, just to show you the difference. So I think that's it. Hopefully that wasn't too long and you found it useful in some way. Um, at the very least, we've gone through the entire process and you can do it yourself. All right. If there's anything else you guys would like me to go through or play with different things, I'm thinking maybe we should do one with volumes where we're pulling them in from Houdini. That might be a laugh or we could just continue this and we could bring it in a little bit more. Maybe we have a crash and put some uh, heat haze coming out the back of the jet. I don't know. Whatever sounds good to you guys. But um yeah, that's it for this time, and let me know what you think. Cheers. Bye.